We're here. I wish I could give this feeling. I wish I could give this feeling. What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Corner Podcast. Kel Dansby here with the old man, Andre as hell. Producer Cole. Baby. Baby. What's up? Yeah, starting the week off with pro wrestling. Let's go. Tons of wrestling over the weekend. We had SummerSlam. We had Ric Flair's last match. We had the first ever Monday Night Raw run by someone who isn't Vincent Kennedy McMahon. A lot to talk to in just those three events. So we're going to dive into all of those today. We will save our opening topics for later in the week because also NABJ slash NAHJ is here in Vegas this week. So me, the old man, we running around all week here. Yes, I will be going. The Jake Paul fight was canceled. You hear more about that later on in the week. Good. So I will be at NABJ all week. Uh, if you guys are there for any reason, stop by the ESPN booth. Stop by Sporting News booth as well. You guys have any questions, just want to chop it up, talk. Plenty of great advice there, great networking, great people to meet. So you guys can catch us at that convention all week as well. And then we'll share our experiences and everything later on in the week during the boxing MMA show. So that should be really, really fun. But today, all pro wrestling. No Beyonce talk. No, no Twitter craziness. It's all wrestling, everything. We got to start with SummerSlam because that's what started, kicked it off. On Saturday, going into this, first and foremost, what were your expectations? Having the first Triple H ran pay-per-view. I mean, it was like Barack Obama inheriting George Bush's mess, right? Like, that's what it was like. <laughs> You're saying it's like Barack wins the presidency, but he really don't do nothing yeah. until January? Yeah. Like, we're, we're in that, like, inauguration Well, you phase. come in and you're just like, oh, my God, look at this shit. Now, that's what, like, Hunter had to come in and was like, all right. <laughs> I got to work with what I got. So that my expectations were like, they were relatively even. I thought it'd be a, a decent show, but like we talked about last week, we predicted some things and um, exceeded expectations. Yeah. But it, yeah, I, I didn't know exactly what to expect because when you inherit a mess, sometimes you can't clean it up in a day. And they did, he did a pretty good job cleaning up as much as he could. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think, yeah, expectations were pretty pretty low. I I want to say I want to say like going into this pay-per-view I was still of the mind that like okay, this is this is still the Vince show, right? Like there's only cuz you're not going to change from from when the news broke of his retirement. There was still what, a week, week and a half until SummerSlam. You're not going to go ahead and and throw all these different booking things and change all the matches. I'm sure some of the finishes may have changed based on on some of the some of the events that happened. Obviously, some of the events that occurred during uh, some of the matches probably were not part of the original plan uh, for, I would say, mostly the better. Um, but we are, uh, this, this was, this is, I feel like this was the kind of, we got through the epilogue here and now we're about to turn and, and start the new chapter. All right, let's kick it off. First match, Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch. 15 minutes, 10 seconds. It's a great match. It was. The happiest, just the runtime yeah. on it is a major Did you change. all start the clock when the match started? Because I started the clock. I was just like, <laughs> 26 okay, seconds. Let's you have it. a low bar to beat here, guys, but just beat it. No, I mean, these two had a great match. They yeah. had the match they could have had before. Not didn't have to necessarily be a SummerSlam, but they could have had a great match before, but they made amends. Yep. Uh, Bianca looked great as usual. Becky, working with a separated shoulder, No, I don't know when it happened. Yeah. I tried watching the match again. I was like, I can't figure out when this happened. I see the photo yeah. where you can see it separated, but I don't I have no clue what spot led to it because she just never missed a beat. No. And I mean, look, guys, Bianca's over like Rover. <laughs> so it's just nothing you could do. She's uniquely talented. She put on a great match. There was a ton of great spots. Those women were working. And for them to open the show was the right thing to do. As we know with like Vince's. WWE, it was like, you don't even know the match orders until like the day of, or <laughs> and I've heard talent don't know the finishes until the day of, and it feels like Triple H is coming and saying, hey, we're working towards something. This is what that something is. Get us there. With Vince, it's like, hey, I don't know what you're doing. Just show up and read this script, and then we'll figure it out from that point. So I thought this was, this was a really damn good match. The women deserve to have this opportunity to open the show, and 
We got a clean finish. And then we had some magic afterwards. Yes. So after the match finishes, clean finish, like you mentioned, we get the handshake, sign of respect, which is obviously, and we'll talk about Monday Night Raw, but the sign of Becky Lynch turning baby face again. One of the easiest ways to do it. Like, yo, I know I screwed you over last year. This turned me a heel. My bad. Good job. Turning baby face. Nothing's better. And she's one of the few who is an amazing baby face. Yep. Better than she is a heel. And her heel run was pretty damn good. She's stone cold for the women. Right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that kind of attitude can work both ways. Yep. But you can keep the same heelish attitude, but still be a baby face. Yep. So That's I expect like her to come back, you know, with that edge. But yeah. she'll come back as the man. So... And you know where she'll go, right? If 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 Triple H has some sense, which I think he does, she feuds with Charlotte first, Ooh. and then deals with Ronda next year's WrestleMania. Yeah, depends how healthy she is. It depends how yeah, of course. Because if you have enough time, cool. But to shoehorn her and Charlotte between Rumble and Mania, hmm. I mean, it's two yeah, months now. It, it depends on yeah, it depends on how that injury is. But yeah, we dude, the journey has to finish with Becky and Ronda at Mania. Has to. Because now, as we'll get to, Ronda's finally turned heel. Yep. And Becky will come back, be a white hot baby face. I'm projecting, right? Becky and Ronda and Charlotte and Bianca should be the two matches at WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't um, know either. I'm just projecting. Charlotte being thrown in there again? Oh, no, throw her in there. She has to lose. Like, Triple H has to come in as like, Nah, you're losing this time. <laughs> I don't, but it, even for her to build up to that style of match this quick, like, I don't know when she comes back. It'll be soon. So it's just one of those things where it's like, reports, reports, reports. If Sasha Banks is signed again, do her and Bianca not run it back? No. If Sasha Banks... How Sasha do you Banks her out of the title picture? If Sasha Banks is signed again... It'll have, it'll have something to do with those tag, women's tag titles to be back on the table. If. It's hard as hell to keep her in that picture again for another six months. Eh, you could. I mean, I, that's what she wants, they're, right? They're, An extended run yes. to legitimize. They're, yeah, legitimize. Them. There's so many question marks that, of like for the, for the, especially the top tier of the women's division that there's no way we're going to be able to, to project from now until WrestleMania what it no. looks like because there's just so no, many. It's, it's yeah. uh, health and then obviously uh, Naomi and Sasha and where they end up because, I mean, based off of reports, like, you know, Sasha gets pl- plenty of money for just, you know, making some appearances here and there. So, like, again, does she need WWE right now, right this second? Probably not. For, uh, first of all, I think those reports are bullshit. Yeah, I, who the fuck? I thought it was too until I saw one from Big Dave and I was like, okay, well, maybe I should listen a little. I think they're having conversations. 100%. I don't think anything's done. No, I, no. Think, I think that, that site no. that posted that, Wrestle Ops or whatever no, that it is. Was, yeah. yeah, it's like you're just trying to get people to click on your shit, right? Yeah. Like, no, there's Good no shot done in deal. the dark. Yeah, you're just <laughs> taking a chance. You heard that maybe they're talking. I mean, but whatever it is, I mean, Sasha and Naomi would obviously come back as, you know, Boston Glow again. And that's what would, it have to be for those tag titles. But looking so far ahead, I mean, there's only one other person who really deserves that spotlight. She looked like a beast at SummerSlam. Rhea. Rhea. Rhea's incredible. Mm-hmm. Her back, son. I was uh, like, yeah, just, just uh, yo, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. in a quick well, second. She, she may have a program with, uh, with, uh, with a male on the roster yeah. uh, <laughs> at this point based on how much she's kicking the shit out of him. But we'll get yeah. to that. Yes. Then we get the return. People thought this would be Sasha. No, it wasn't Sasha. I think people thought cool. uh, Bailey. This was the Bailey, Bailey spot. I think I said yeah. Bailey was. Yeah. Cool. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. they thought like, you know, Boston Glow with Bailey might be like a, a you know, once people saw it was three people, it yeah. was like okay, it makes sense. Well, that's but, that's when all of a sudden that's when the jaw started to that, drop because of who was selected. Not one return. So we get Bailey coming back out. Mm-hmm. Heel Bailey. I'm not sure if she ever goes back to wacky way. No. 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 Like no. she's so good as a heel. Ding dong, Bailey's. Yes, so Bailey comes out. All right, that's incredible in its own right. But now Bailey has a crew. EO Sky, who gets a crazy pop. Yeah. On that night, which, because I guess there's a lot of marks. Like, it's something. Yeah. yeah. Everybody knows she's, she, she's incredible. Like, yes. we've seen her, like, do wild shit at war games. Oh. Before I even get, go, go, like, deep into it, as soon as I saw EO Sky, first of all, I was like, I don't mind this name change. No, good name change. It actually mm-hmm. works. 
The other thing is, I was like, ooh, her and Oscar are about to tear some shit up. I can't wait to get to Monday Night Raw. We'll get to Raw. So then we also get Dakota Kai. Yes. Mm-hmm. She's always been amazing. Yes. And she actually resigned. Like, Eo wasn't released. No, no, no. They just had nothing for her. Yeah. Dakota came back. Yeah. Yes. Which is clearly a Hunter movie. It's like, I have no women. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need one. Yep. And then you release, you got rid of one of the women that I really like. And we all know she's a great heel. Like, yep. her heel turn on Tegan Knox what was that two years ago now? Yeah. It was incredible. Three. Was it three? Yeah, yeah it was that. Were fans? There were fans there? Now, yeah, you're right. And now, if yeah. only we can uh, somehow get Morrow to come back along with Dakota Kai. So we got Dakota Kai. What is she doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Morrow might if someone's not yelling in his ear. I'd see, you know. Ooh. <laughs> so are we are we ushering in a new era? I mean, when that when that when the two of them came out, I mean, yeah, e- Eo Shirai was. I'm sorry, Eo Sky. Uh, obviously, like that was like very much like okay, like yeah. Hunter's pulling the strings. It's when Dakota Kai came out. That's when it was like, oh shit, yep. this this is happening. Like that's that doesn't that like yeah yeah Eos Kai doesn't happen, but Dakota Kai definitely does not happen. This is someone who was in La La Land. I'm sure plenty of people were thinking she's probably heading to Tony Khan Land. Yeah, I mean that's where she other is. Place. Impact at SummerSlam. Yep. Not not in NXT at SummerSlam coming out for a huge spot. So yep. it, this makes you also think like. Triple H is coming in. It's like, all right, we need to retool this women's division. So that means I fully expect Raquel Gonzalez to get an upheaval of her character because she's just kind of this baby face that runs around doing the power bomb. And I fully expect Zia Lee to fall back and Shotzi as well. So oh, Shotzi is going to get pushed. Yeah, the like, like the women that were built up on NXT yep. now have an opportunity to work. And as soon as you saw Dakota Kai, that's when I was like, oh, okay, we're clearing up this division a little bit. I'm sure some pieces are going to start to move around and fall into place. But as soon as I saw that, I was like, this is, this is great. Now Bianca's looking like, I got people to work with. And you know yeah. what else they have? A tag team. Well, yeah, that's, that's well, you another know. thing. Mm-hmm. They got to bring those tag titles back. They yeah. have a natural women's tag team. Yep. Incredible. So, great faction. They come out. Yaka and Becky stare them down. They leave. Becky, you mentioned, injured the shoulder. She'll open on Monday Night Raw. We'll get to that. Then we have the next match. Once my match That was a statement opener, though. That oh. was a statement opener. I, I, oh, yeah. For like, him, uh, other than, like, the, the, the match being high quality. And, by the way, that, 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 that last KOD oh. was oh, yeah. just, like, it, you know, like, you know, it was a good, hey, uh, Give credit where credit's due. It's a good camera cut. For that <laughs> KOD and, like, for that to look as powerful as it did. Because I don't know how she got, like, Becky to kind of, like, stay in the air for, like, a half second longer. But it was just a massive impact. That was a perfect way to end that match. And then all the stuff at the end. That was, like, all right, Trips put in the call. Like, shit, shit's going down. When you have 100 camera cuts, you're going to get one. You're going to, yeah. <laughs> like, sooner. Shoot or shoot. Or later. Yeah. <laughs> And then second match on the card, Logan Paul versus The Miz. Logan Paul had... So, Logan Paul started, and I was like, ooh, this is rough. There, there was a first the initial spot where there was, like, some transition, and, like, Logan was waiting for it. And he yeah. was, like, he had his arms, like, weird, and The Miz did it. And then after that, it was smooth sailing. And I was like, all right, he's got it. These Paul kids, man, like, they just get it. They, under, they work hard for this stuff. I was telling someone that the other day. I was like, people can feel however they want about Jake, Logan... Whatever they want to do, they do at 110% to the point where that's why they don't fail at anything because they just go all in on it. Yeah. And if he does that with pro wrestling, this match was perfect, a dichotomy of that, right? Because you look what is now, I think it was 15 years ago, The Miz was in this spot yep. coming off of the real world, off of the challenge and saying, I want to be a pro wrestler as a celebrity dedicated himself, and went all pro wrestling. Now he has a 15, 16-year career. Logan is more athletic yeah. than Miz ever was. On the mic, I mean, the man talks for a living. Like, it can't be too hard. No. Like, his podcast is pretty damn good. So, like, the guy knows his way around a microphone. Is he the Miz? Not yet. But working with guys like the Miz, I think they have something. If he wants to be a full-time pro wrestler, he can carve out a damn good career there. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, the, the frog splash was beautiful. Oh. Like, that frog splash, table? I was like, mm. 
That's a pretty goddamn good thought, Flash. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> as optimistic about Logan Paul's future because, again, I think this was a case of, like, the, the, the Miz was kind of final boss energy of, like, this is kind of who he who he relates to the most and we're, we're already having him go over. Obviously, like, they could fight again, obviously. I just don't, I'm not sure where Logan's character goes next because Logan to me, is destined to be a heel Absolutely. at some point. Right? 100%. Oh, so, yeah. you know, and it's going to take, it's going to take a while for, you know, fans to, because right now he's still, like, yes, he has signed the WWE contract. Yeah. And that was one of the questions that I, that I, that I was kind of posing to, you know, to, is like Logan Paul, are we considering him a wrestler in this match? Or is he still like a celebrity spot in this match? No, no, he's a celebrity. This was celebrity spot, okay. according to what he put on social sure. on Monday, which is the, whatever contract he signed three weeks ago mm -hmm. has been redone. Okay. And it's, yo, I want to work, like, road, like, every, weekly. He doesn't know when that kicks in, he said. More details to come. Right. But when it does, much like we saw Ronda get a taste at the PC, and then next you know she was doing house shows for a year and a half. Yeah. I think he's getting that deal. So like, I, yo, I, think I want it, to be it, a wrestler. It, it, his, his vision will become clear once we start viewing Logan Paul the wrestler, not yes. just Logan Paul the celebrity who's yeah. coming in. Today. And, I, and I totally agree with you. As far as the athleticism of, of the spots that he was doing, like, obviously, like, you know, little things here and there, but, like, he got it. He totally gets it. Yep. And, and now it's a question of, how do you get the best out of Logan Paul and the heel that he can be? And how do you make that transition? So it's not, you know, like obviously it is, it can't just, it's not going to be necessarily a one-to-one -one conversion. He's got to like up the theatrics a little bit. We'll see what happens. It, the, yeah. the hardest part is when you're a celebrity and you come in, we all look at the things you do on the offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The big thing is how well can you sell? sell. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to learn in the PC. Yeah. You, you yeah. got to learn how to sell. You have to learn how to make other people good. Right now, it's like, do something we don't expect you to do, and we're all going to pop because we don't expect it. And maybe they send him down to the PC now. I'm sure they, they're going to have to. Yeah, like now, maybe he's like, no, I want to do this. Yeah. Do this. And then they're like, all right, go and, go and work. Because if you're going to wrestle, you have to sell. Like, you just yeah. can't be all offense. And he, you know, he did. There was some shaky sell spots in this match, but sure. if he works on it, if this is what he really wants to do, he has a future in it. And then, We'll see where he goes and when he returns. I, I'm sure we probably won't see him back for a month. I will say not. that There's match, a lot of shit to figure out. Again, he has other obligations. Like, how do you take your very successful podcast on the road now? Like, right. Well, I mean, look at what Pat McAfee's things. doing. Yeah. Like, so you just got to set it up so it, yeah. they'll make it work. Yeah. Right. But, like, how do you do it logistically? This match was long. It was long. It was, it was a long match. It was long. There was another match that was kind of long. Well, it shouldn't have been. There was a couple matches that were a little I mean, bit too long. 14, 15. It could have maybe been, like, two I think minutes that's, shorter. That's the third longest match on the card. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, it. Would just it just I was like at some point I was like, boy, they're really going at it for because it it felt long. Yeah, you could be like, we can go home now. Yeah, yeah but like, it was. It was still I mean, I, I mean, again, credit to to Logan being able to hang in there for that long and and like yeah, his his work was was good. Yeah. It was good. Lashley versus Theory, mm -hmm. only match I have a problem with okay. probably on this whole card. I've seen it work before, so I can't say that they're not doing the right thing because Rollins did the same exact thing when he had the briefcase. Losing all the time. Constantly. Yeah. The man won one match between when he got, like, the briefcase and then cashed in. But Rollins had a history in the shield. Yeah. A huge turn. He's had angles before that were very successful. He was tag team champ. He was, I believe, an IC champ before then. He had a legacy to fall back on. Theory does not. No. It is a very dangerous way to book him. He lost in four minutes and 45 seconds again to Bobby Lashley. Understand maybe, like, so Ziggler, like, distracts him a lot and does stupid shit. Like, maybe a lot of his losses aren't, quote-unquote, super clean. But he's tapping. He's getting submitted. Like, to do that, and we'll talk about later on, like, he has the briefcase, but sooner or later, the luster is going to be gone for whenever he does cash in. 
he doesn't have the cachet of a Seth Rollins. Well, I think what they have to do, and I said this, I, I said this why he's not cashing in. They have to heat him up. At some point, they, like he's not. This would have helped. Yeah, but you can't, <laughs> but you can't go over on Lashley if you're trying to I mean, establish the U.S. title. Right. Yeah. All right. He was 0 7 going into that match. Now he's 0 and 8. Yes. Yeah. But if you look at Lashley, it's like if you're going to establish a U.S. title, who better than that guy? Right. Because who's going to beat him? And we will talk about Raw. Yeah. Obviously. And it's like if, and if you look at that, anybody that works Lashley from this point, if you go over on Lashley, it should mean something. Yep. Now, in Theory's case, it's just not ready for that yet. The fact, this is why I said Hunter inherited a dirty house. I'm sure he probably looked at this match like, why are we doing this? Again. Because. Theory losing doesn't help him at all. It just kind of moves him out of the U.S. title picture, which we knew was going to happen, but we didn't have to do a rematch in order to get there. The match that they should have done was Theory and Ziggler, because obviously Ziggler keeps appearing. Yeah, they got beef. But you have to heat Theory up. That's why I was like, he's not cashing in, I don't think, for at least seven months. It's going to be a while before Theory cashes in. I have to go after Mania. It could be, mm-hmm. right? But, but that's, you can't do it anytime soon because there's no cachet in Theory. He's not legitimate, especially when Roman Reigns is the champion. Yeah. This is this got to split those belts somehow. No, this, no I don't think you got to split these belts. I like you, I like one. Or champion. you got to unify the belts permanently. Well, that's what Wheel. they have to do. <laughs> they, have to, they have to figure out. Like at a certain point, I mean, Hunter likes boxing. Maybe he likes the look of these belts, right? Undisputed, they have these belts. But I think I think you should have one champion between both shows. Yeah. And if you elevate those mid-card titles, they feel like the champions for each of those yep. shows, and they get a, ch- a shot at the, the main guy. But who knows? It's like Again, you're inheriting a mess. But losing in four minutes, I expected it to happen. Again, I felt like Bobby Lash was kind of an afterthought. But at the same time, when he came out, I was like, damn, he's still really, like, really over. Oh, they gave him the super comic yeah. book, Lexi Rexy entrance, like yeah. all the pyro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like a million bucks. He and he's like 45 years old. I mean, he's going to pull the trigger, pull it I need out. to know who paints his eyebrows. He's a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Him and my grandma, you same eyebrow pencil. Yeah. I can tell you, with exact same number color on them. He's a bad bitch. I think, uh, yeah, the, 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 theory, the theory conundrum here is, is very is, it's very interesting because this is a remnant of Vince McMahon booking. Yeah. Again, like, he by was, all, all indications, Trips really like theory. Oh, he yeah. handpicked him from Evolve when he was champion. Oh, of course. So, 100%. I'm not sure this is the way he would have went. Co- correct. Again, it's not necessarily about if we like theory or not. It's the spot he's in, right? So the 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 case with, with theory being so ice cold, and again, he won the briefcase in a match that he wasn't even advertised to be in. <laughs> I was sitting there, and it was just like, oh, we got one more guy. Oh, it could be it's Theory who lost earlier tonight. And you're just like, okay, Vince woke up and said, why is Theory not in this match? I thought I put him there. You know, like, so <laughs> So I guess it, it becomes interesting of, like, now his, I mean, usually you get the money in the bank, and that's a sure thing. Yep. Now, obviously, there is now precedent for cash-ins not necessarily going well. We've even had someone win the briefcase, and then he loses the briefcase. Don't, never doing that again. Don't do that again. But uh, it, it's funny. Will Washington, friend of the show on Grapsity, came up with a very interesting idea, which I kind of like, which is what if he holds on to this briefcase until the next money in the bank and he has until, and like the whole storyline is he has until like the end of the show to cash it in and we just follow him like backstage trying to cash it. In. And like, what if he like tries to cash it and he cashes too late? Like you could do something that's kind of funny it with expires, that. Yeah, it's like and a bad check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's just like, no, I was meaning to check it in. Like you, you could do something Very large with that. Countdown clock. And also that gives you a lot of time to heat him up, which is ultimately what needs to happen. But I don't know. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, his situation again is a as far as the messes that kind of need to be cleaned up. He definitely is one of the ones at the top of the list. Then we have the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic, mm-hmm. defeating the Judgment Day. And then you have Edge it, making his in a, in a no DQ match. Why were they tagging? Why were they tagging? I, no there was DQ? a lot of things. I was like, why isn't Rhea involved earlier? Why didn't they just yeah, it's throw no, people? It's, it's no DQ. They, they're very weird matches. Again, Rhea Ripley looked excellent. I was just like, mm-hmm. damn, they pulled it out of the Bianca match? Like, was she hurt? Like, what was going on? Eventually, I go back to it. Clearly, Rhea and Bianca yeah. are like the future of women's wrestling for this particular company. But this match is all about the Edge return because we all knew what was happening. Yep. And then it came back. And this, you know who Edge is now? Remember when you play like Street Fighter and you could pick Red Ken, White Ken, <laughs> like different versions of the same character? 
It's like, and then it's like you picked that with that version of him. Now we got a different version of Edge. And then on Monday night, we went back to old Edge. I'm like, Radar feel, superstar, baby. I feel bad for Edge because, it, again, it felt like the Judgment Day was his thing. Vince kicked him out because whatever creative Edge didn't agree with. Hunter said, come back. But you can't have that heel music because that's heel shit. You're a baby face. Get your old shit back. Edge is like, dude, I came out of retirement for this shit. So hopefully they write the ship with Edge. I feel like we're in a good place after Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Just don't waffle anymore on it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, dog, I'm over the Mysterios. I'm just, I'm over it. Every time they wrestle, like, this is where Dominic turns. <laughs> are you, are you over the, never here's thing, are you over the Mysterios or are you over a Mysterio? No, I'm over them both. I'm over them both. Because it's like, you got to have son with dad, right? right? And I guarantee if there's any talk of turning him heel, you know, dad's going to have something to say. and. Or maybe Ray turns heel. Ray has never been a heel. No. So or maybe, should, yeah. But, but there's nothing for Dominic to do if Ray's a heel. Like, Dominic's a bad baby face. Yeah. Right. So, what you had alluded to earlier, I was like, maybe Ray's just going to toss Dominic around for the next few <laughs> weeks. Because he keeps whooping his ass <laughs> every <laughs> time. And if, if your Triple H is like, and like, they, there's a, that one, I don't know if you guys saw it on social media, there's a video of Rhea Ripley pacing back and forth outside the ring. And she looks amazing. Like, she looks huge, first of all. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the announce table? Yes. Yeah, yeah, And I was just like, yo, if you put her in there with Dominic, you would be like, that's feasible. Oh, 100%. Dominic has no chance of winning. Yeah. <laughs> feasible. So kick his ass. She yoked him up with the, with the legs. She's good, man. But <laughs> this match was what it was. It was all built around the edge comeback. And I'm like, all right. Dominic ate the spear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, kept fit. Boy, I don't, I don't know what uh, the wardrobe situation was backstage, but uh, Edge, Edge both looked like he was just out of Thriller, and he had some, like, Matrix sunglasses. Yeah. He was, like, 2000s up here, 1980s right here. I was very confused. Guess but I did, enjoy, I, I did enjoy him running to the ring with his arms kind of like this. <laughs> I got so much joy out of that. No one else seemed to think it was funny. Maybe I'm weird. You know, he was running like the uh, the old man from Six Flags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad someone someone yeah, saw someone it. saw I something saw in saw that. It. it was just the, his face too, just like <sighs> yo. Goes. Can we talk about how long this ramp was? Oh, <laughs> this this show was, he was long. Running forever. We, we later found out uh, in another run in uh, how long it really yo, truly was. <laughs> this ramp was so long that I was like. I was clocking the show and I was like, this show is going over because of these entrances. It's like longer than three hours because every entrance, like you could see how long, everybody's running the 400. Yeah, we're going to get to Riddling. <laughs> Seth. It's like they were running. <laughs> they kept camera cutting, they were still running. <laughs> like, God damn, this is a long ass ramp. Yeah, yeah, Edge having to, do, 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 do. like, oh my God, he's running the 400 and he's gassed. Just the, oh the, that with the jacket and the sunglasses, I was done. Was I was just like, what did, what did we do? What did yeah. we do here? How wild. did we get here? I'm glad his old music's back. Thank God. Because that's music one of the, was always great. One of the best themes yeah. for any wrestler. Exactly. So we'll see where they go from here. We'll talk about Monday Night. Indeed. Shortly. And then I guess we can talk about Seth and Riddle. Yeah. So it's your sure. work. Riddle comes reason, out of nowhere. Look, they're, they're going to build this feud. Yeah. It's obvious. I like this. You know, Riddle comes out, jumps the guard rail. Oh, I want to fight Seth. And Seth is like, all right, I'll fight you. And then Seth looks down that long ass. I was like, oh, shit. It's like a mile to get down here. <laughs> they both start running at each other. And I was like, yo, this is the longest run it was some, ever. It was some awkward timing, though, for Riddle to jump in because it was right after they showed uh, Kid Rock and him making out. And then all of a sudden, someone jumped in the ring. I thought it was Kid Rock originally. And I was oh, like, it was. oh, like, God. Kid Rock made out with, like, the chick next to him? Yeah, and yeah. I, was like, I was like, oh, God, why is he running into the ring? Now? And then it was Riddle. Because, like, I saw, like, a little bit of the hair, you know, and, like, it just was very awkward timing. It was. I was like, does he know her? Is that consent? Like, WWE, like, right now, we should probably not. Like, I just, uh, I just, love, that, I just love that Riddle is session. still doing it for Randy. Doing it for Randy, man. And then, yeah, and then, yeah, both uh, Seth, Seth Rollins did both A Hard Day's Night and uh, the scene where Lancelot from Monty Python and the Holy Grail is running towards the castle. He did both <laughs> yes, of those. He's so he had the people running after him, like Hard Day's Night, but then it was like they kept cutting back to him. He was at the same point. Still dun, 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 dun. The guards are just sitting there like, is he cut? Is he, is he, cut? you know? And then he eventually got there. Yeah, they, they didn't space that out probably. I don't think anybody did proper measurements on the way no. to the ring. They're like, holy <laughs> shit. This Seth is should have walked and talked at the same time. Yeah. And then shortened the distance. he had been out of breath though. Oh, yeah. it was crazy. And then, uh, but no, I think, again, Riddle gets curb stomped. So, I mean, it's a good way to build Riddle though. 
Yeah, I, I think this is a good feud, and they give him a little bit of an edge. No pun intended. To the last conversation, yeah, where he had like some grit to him, right? He wasn't just hey, I'm super high, like smoky, like get your ass out here now. It's awesome. I, like, give me MMA Riddle a little. Isn't bit. this what? I, remember I said this? I was like, if when Riddle gets up there, he can't be RVD cool, bro. Yeah, yep. Eventually, at some point, you have to give him an edge and make him an angry, like weed smoking baby face. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's all right. I, I, I'm high I, today, but I'm gonna fuck you. Like he yeah. needs that, and I think Rollins can bring it out of him. This yep. this could work out very well over the next several weeks of the player run. No, I agree. Great feud for him. Gives Rollins something to do. Yeah, and then. Pat McAfee versus Happy Corp. Pat McAfee almost went, died and went to the wrestling guys like seven times in this match. <laughs> there were several spots like when he jumped on the second turnbuckle. Oh, I was like, caught, and he slipped a little bit? Yeah, there's that one. There was one where he was like, whoa, whoa. I was like, the wrestling guys are looking out for Pat McAfee tonight. <laughs> this match, I felt like it was too long. Like as the match went on, I was, oh, like, yeah. I was like, why is this so long? long? I know, but it felt long. It felt, it felt. Oh, like and this time. was a match that I alluded to with Logan Paul was like, well, this was all about offense from Pat McAfee. Like, it was very little like real selling. Yeah. I didn't particularly care for this match. And he slipped at one point and then like that finisher was kind of ugly looking. You yeah. Know, it's, this uh, match was what it was. I thought it would have been a lot better. Logan Paul outdid Pat McAfee. Yeah. I mean. Hey, this, Pat's done Pat's war games. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's like, hey, you and Corbin, I thought this would be, I thought Pat would have had a better match than Logan Paul. Yeah. It was the other way around. No, yeah, Pat, I, I think that, we see more of Pat just as an announcer. Yeah, yeah. To, to be fair, Pat's WrestleMania performance was spot on. I oh, think yeah. he was really good there. Yeah. So you know, and and then he had the uh, he had the choir as well. That oh, which was, was fun. That yeah. was very. Fun. Yeah, the yeah the choir. Hopefully, which we was... get Baron Corbin back though, and, and not Happy, happy Corbin. Corbin or Sad Seems. Corbin. Give me Sad Corbin. Oh, yeah, Sad Corbin. Destitute was great. Corbin was oh, fantastic. We ran God. into Sad Corbin last SummerSlam. Man, it was did. amazing. In disguise. <laughs> In the fact disguise. that he just had that same shirt with like the same stain on it every yep. week was just. We ran into him right before he gambled, and won it all, and became Happy Corbin. Long term booking. Gotta love it. We were there for his you winning. Saw it. His winning ways. You saw it. Then we had the Usos versus Street Profits. So, with Jeff Jarrett as a special guest. He was? Me. So, I got to talk about this match. <laughs> the Jeff Jarrett thing was so pointless. And it, again, this is something Triple H inherited and was like, I really have nothing for you to do. But the worst part about this match, it was like, as soon as it started feeling like it was going somewhere, it ended. Yeah. And I felt like, we left a lot on the bone with this match. Still was a fine match, but it was just cut short. Like, this should have been one of the longest matches of the night. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they were primed to deliver. Their previous match was better than this. Oh, by far. The Money in the Bank match the bank. Is, is, is one of the best tag matches, I think, of the year. Yeah. Just one of. Yes. I'm not. FTR, FTR Briscoes is a little bit they, far ahead. They ran but, the table. But my point being, like, they should get credit it's where credit's due. That, that match yeah. in that crowd was so hot for that Money in the Bank tag match that this was always going to be a hard act to follow. And yeah, um, I like the idea of giving it a stipulation. This was a stupid stipulation. Uh, and, and, and also, you're going to bring out Jarrett. Okay. Uh, say whatever you will about like it being Jeff Jarrett. But like, how is there not one guitar even just threatened? Like, you brought <laughs> the guy out there, let him do his thing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Let, let, what was the point? Here, here's was, the problem. Were they short a ref that night? And they were just like, we need someone so they get a water break back there. Yeah, that's like being the Dudleys and be like, no, no, no tape. Yeah, well, no tables. Well, look, no 3D. You know where Jeff Jarrett would have fit? In the Corbin McAfee match. You can do shenanigans there. Yeah. And they wouldn't have taken away from the match. People wanted to see tag team wrestling. They didn't want to see a guitar spot in this match. This no. should have been a ladder match. It's, With anything. all the titles mm. hanging up top. Anything. anything. Tornado tag. It could have been, it could have been the first. It could have been anything. Tables match. I don't care. But the special referee, like Jeff Jarrett, should have been the referee either in the Logan Paul Miz match or the Pat McAfee Corbin match. Yeah. Because that's where he fits. That kind of he could have hit Corbin with a guitar. And we'd have been like, cool. But in this match, I know that, you know, I'm assuming that Triple H is like, why is he here? Yeah, just <laughs> count it clean, like tease some turn yeah. stuff. Don't you got a match tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't you gotta yeah. make sure the old man doesn't die? <laughs> get, so, get your check, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they left meat on the bone, but yeah, we're we're seeing as we saw Monday night, which we'll talk about. We're seeing either I don't know if they're going to split them, but it has begun. The seed, the seed <laughs> has been planted. Montez, and we have Liv Morgan versus mm. Ronda Rousey. Uh, this was rough. Yes, thank you. It's four minutes. This was rough. No one Ronda I, wanted to go home. I don't think 
any, I mean, other than Ronda turning heel, which is like, that is like the, the, the basic thing they needed to accomplish. They did yeah. get that done, but no one looks good after this match. Nope. They made Liv Morgan look like shit. Which is what I thought was going to happen. I was like, you're in the rock and the hard place. Yep. Not Liv's fault. No. But you booked this wrong and you've given her no momentum at, no. to beat Ronda heading into this match. Then the match happens and Ronda's just tossing her. Yep. yep. And I was like, this is your champ. And there was like, the only way out of it, it was like, oh, let's do this, this double, this, this submission pin spot. But the problem with that spot is Ronda wasn't wrong. Correct. Liv tapped first. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to turn her heel, but... She's right. <laughs> yeah, if, if we're... I always use New York and Chicago as the two places. If we're in New York or Chicago, the fans will be like, no, Ron is right. We're not going to buy this shit. You can do this shit in Nashville and get away with it. But I, yeah, four minute match. Liv didn't look any better. Nope. Ronda basically beats the shit out of her. Liv looked worse. She comes out of there worse. So it's like, how do you go into, now you suspended Ronda because they're after the match. I thought, I thought that that's what would have lived to the DQ. She would have held that ankle in the lock too long. We yeah. could have got away with that one. No, instead, she is the double thing, and then Ronda's legit mad because she should be because of how this match ends. And then she, you know, injures Liv, and then she gets suspended. And after, when it was all over, I was like, well, we got what we needed to get to was Ronda, like you said, Ronda turned the heel. But what am I doing with Liv Morgan now? I'm very concerned with, uh, with, with that. It, it feels like the... Like, this doesn't feel worse than the 26 seconds last year. Of, no. Of, of, of no. It's not, it's not that bad. She like, won. She, <laughs> she won, but now she's at a weird, like, it, it's a similar comeback thing where now, like, obviously, like, the, the, but the extra challenge of this is, like, she already has the belt. Right. Now it's like she has to not only make herself legit, but also make the belt more legit. Also because the woman wearing the other belt just fucking kicked ass, right? Yeah. So now everyone's going to go, oh, like, who's the champion Bianca, right? Like, in this I era where we have two- the SmackDown champion was until this. <laughs> this is, this, therein lies the problem, which is too bad because people love Liv Morgan. Oh, yes. yes. Liv Morgan is, is over, but now we've got a, this is, again, top of the list problem. Like, Triple H has got to figure out, I don't, I don't think the solution is, Getting the belt off Liv. I don't think no, no, you no. can't you can't double down on this and you can't bury her because she just got here. Yeah. But you again, you want to talk about how theory needs to get uh, momentum. Liv's got to figure out a way to get momentum because by the time Ronda comes back, she's got to win clean. That raw women's roster stacked. Whoa. There was no one added to the SmackDown roster. So yes. we're in for something on Friday because he's not just gonna stack one. And not the other. And he can't put like Charlotte over there because then no, Liv's dead. She can't beat Charlotte. No. So, so here, here's my, if you ask me how to remedy this, you got to get Ronda off of TV for a while. Hence the suspension. Right. But you have to keep her off like for a month at least. You got to keep her off TV and allow Liv to move into another feud. Right. But the problem is, as we, there's nobody on SmackDown's roster that has built enough cachet to be like, as a legit heel, yeah. you need a heel for Liv to deal with over the next month and then beat him legit. Like, who is it? Natalia's, Natalia's a big show, right? Like, we don't know what yeah. Natalia is. Shotzi hasn't done enough, even though she's a great heel. I mean, the, you haven't done enough to even build Lacey Evans. No. So it's, so but who, that might be your only option. It is. Because it's, it's not Raquel. Raquel. It's a baby face. Can't be Raquel. No, Lacey's a heel. She turned heel again? She has no choice. Nobody likes her. I, I don't know, man. They were building her as a baby fan. They tried, and the fans just rejected it after the while. <laughs> like, Money in the Bank was a turning point. Like, Money in the Bank, they yeah. presented her as a baby face, yeah. and they booed her out of the building Every again. time she touched the belt. I haven't seen her since. But it's Vince in America, and he thought that shit was going to go over, and the fans were like, nope. no, we don't like they her. They booed her on the 4th of July. They booed her on the 4th of <laughs> July. American they booed gimmick. her after she gave all those sob stories. After all she's been through, we're like, we don't give a shit. <laughs> we don't care. Black women have been through worse. We don't want to hear this from you. <laughs> we don't want to hear it. It's a like, tough spot for Lacey. Yeah, so, but she it does have a good baby face story. Maybe, old, right? maybe there's something, something went wrong. Maybe there's something. something that can work here. I don't know. Like, again, Liv needs something. Liv, Liv needs she something. Needs but Ronda's got to disappear. Who I think it's real. Back? Outside of Charlotte, somebody come back. Or someone from NXT. Or Raquel Gonzalez turns here, but that's too soon because and, she just and, got there. And Raquel's like, and then it's like, all, like if, you, if you do that right away, it's like yes. Raquel's Bigger than Liv. Yeah, like you burn, you throw burn her around. We just watched Ronda throw Liv around like a ragdoll. Daddy Deville is there. Like she can wrestle. A they put bit. the cart before the horse. They did. They they gave Liv the title and never thought, well, Vince never thought, hey, she needs contenders to beat 
Like, she needs other people. Every year, that briefcase for the women is cashed in in the same damn way. Yeah, yeah. You and they, there, like there, is, there is something here, though, where, because I think, and I thought of it, we forgot somebody, by the way. Um, Who? We forgot. Um, you forgot. Oh, my God. You forgot. Um, no, I just, I just had it. Uh, <laughs> With Rhonda, Rhonda's chick, Shayna Basil, Shayna. Shayna. But she hasn't been back. That's Doesn't matter. And also, bring you her can't, back. Also, you she's can't. menacing. No, you're right. She you is. beat Rhonda. Rhonda's suspended. It, it's just dog. It's time. She can't it's fight hard. Shayna yet. She can't fight Shayna. She's got to build up to Shayna no, first. She, be Shayna. Well, no. The problem is, is that if all right, Shayna Basil is a legit badass. We all know this. Correct. And if you look at Hunter, Hunter's gonna say she's a legit, legit badass. But she hasn't done anything. Nobody else knows she's legit. Well, no people the crowd do. Won't like. You I, have to build. Like, Shane is not somebody you can use as cannon fodder, right? No. Like, a, there's a lot of champions, and then you big show that moment. I, like, I use everybody's first big, like, feud is, like, big show. Nia Jax was that. Right. She just yeah. looked imposing. Right. Yeah. But you don't have that on SmackDown. You, do yeah. you, you don't have a woman who's, who's been around, and you try when Natalia, but people are like, no, I don't know what the fuck Natalia, I don't care. No. And she just lost to Ronda. Exactly. I think, I think, but th this is where there, there could be some good out of this for Liv's character because I think, um, to me, for Liv's character, I think there is valid criticism towards, like, her character and the way she, she's presented because at some point, like, okay, she wins the money in the bank, she's crying, she's super happy. She wins the title, she's crying, she's super happy. She comes out the next Raw or SmackDown, She's crying. She's happy. Like, there's this kind of, like, thing where, like, it's almost like she kind of can't believe that she's, like, her character is displaying, like, her character, like, she can't believe that she's made it, right? And, like, she's got the title. Like, she's in disbelief. And now she just got thrown around like a rag doll. Like, she's still lucky to have the title. Maybe this is a way for her character to have a little bit more of an edge because I think there's definitely a part of the crowd that's going to be like, okay, we're we're done with this whole, like, Right. Oh, I can't believe I made it. Yeah, you're, like you're here. You made it. Relax. You made it. Like yeah. re relax. Like you're good. Now, now this could be a good turning point for her to go. Like, all right, I got my ass whooped. It was pretty embarrassing. I realized I got to work harder and like I got to get more of an edge. Well, and usually for that, like you lose your first few, right? Like correct. It costs you because you're too happy right. go lucky. Then that person beats you one right. more time, and then you then overcome them, get your belt back, and go right. on your normal run. Well, that's the cart before the horse thing. Yeah. They, they've done all this too mm, soon, yeah. and now they got to reverse engineer it. So we'll see what happens. It's tricky. It's tough. And then uh, main event, Roman Be Reigns. Before we talk about the main event, can we talk about, just really quickly, uh, <laughs> the maximum male model spot? Oh. Because <laughs> that shit is it, yo, it might work in Saudi. It, it's not working in Saudi. <laughs> Mansoor is going to get Saudi Arabia. They're like, oh, the hell no. They're pouring the water. So, oh my god! I mean, it's Zoolander. Oh my it's, god! It's, it's funny. Zoolander. It's funny, right? It's funny. It's funny, oh, but it's like, man. but if you're if you're Mansoor or <laughs> Mansoir, uh, <laughs> uh huh, and it's like, well, when do we start? Because it's not like that. You can't do like the billion chuck thing all over again. You can't do that anymore. No. So, but if they're gonna start working, when? Because it's well, they all gotta fun. work as a tag team. I, it's, it's fun yeah. now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know uh, what the future holds for them. I just was. Uh, I laughed out loud during that. I, yeah, I was tickled. I Viking, was tickled. Was Viking good. Raiders can't keep beating up uh, the New Day, so maybe the Viking Raiders. Go We're going to see some changes on SmackDown. Like it's it's inevitable that yeah. there's going to be some changes on SmackDown yeah. soon. But whew, I was anyway. watching this. I was like, y'all, when they go back to Saudi, they're like Mansoor is not coming. It's going to be Mansoor again. I mean, at least they brought back what's his face as the manager. Oh, LA, Max Max, LA Knight. Max Dupree. Yeah, Max Dupree. <laughs> And now he's got his sister. The Let's name L.A. Knight would work much better for a manager of male models. I know. <laughs> but I guess it is what it is. Max. Hey, at least, at least he's back. There were reports yeah. that after a while, he was just like, uh, well, that's why they brought in his sister. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Move her out. In because the they didn't think they were getting Max back. And then Triple H was Trips like, like nah, And maybe Trips maybe. will let him wrestle as the face of this. Which they should. And then yeah. she, the sister is just a valet and wrestles yeah. as well as a heel wrestler. And then you have a tag team. Now everyone's doing something. You just yeah. don't need a manager. If you want a manager, just have a manager. Yeah. Right. This guy can wrestle. Anyways. <laughs> like, sorry, wrestle. sorry to distract. I just, um, it, it was, it was entertaining. That's all right. Sports entertainers. I was sports entertainers. <laughs> Roman Reigns versus Brock 
Lesnar. All right, let's talk about this first. This thing first. Roman Reigns has a 100 catching in Madden oh. because the way he catches this mic, <laughs> the awareness, and the awareness, 99. Yeah, no, look, but the wink. <laughs> no, he he catches like he barely he moves his re- hand. He doesn't lift his hand. He just turns his hand over, catches the mic, Bum. and then he was like, "Yeah, bitch, I did that shit." And he winks at Brock, and I was like, "Oh, he got well, He's got to go. He's got to go." <laughs> like, so this match was it great? No. It was fine. I thought it was fun. Did it need to be 23 minutes? Well, Probably not. What happened? Just like I, the reason why I hate last man standing happen, matches happened here. Yeah, the there was There was a series of like every time they fell, one, two. And I was like, dude, he's going to get up. Can we just get through this damn count? It drives me nuts. They always take it to nine. Yeah, it's like, come on. And, and they must have done it like seven or eight times between the two of them ugh. by the end. Yeah. Ugh. But... Like I said, Theory was going to t- cash in. They're not going to let him cash in here. I thought it was well done. Yeah. He, running down, seeing an opportunity. was like, ah, but he can't turn Usos that focus. coming in. The, well, the, no, it, took, it just took forever to get to Theory, to get to the Usos. Yeah. They wrestled a full ass match and then started doing the shenanigans. They could have done the shenanigans like five minutes in. Nah. I mean, the, the interestings were well, like Well, we had minutes. tractor yeah. shenanigans. Does that count? That, that was like a good shenanigans. visual. Yes. Oh, the lifting of the ring? Well, hey, let's put it this way. Um, good idea, bad idea. Uh, good idea, lifting the ring with the tractor. That was great. Yeah. Bad idea, the idea that Brock was going to try to like look ferocious by picking up Roman in there and then just bloop, right in the ring. He yeah. just, he just <laughs> so, here you go, buddy. You want to go back in that ring right there? There you go. I yeah, thought, I was like, let me just drop, let me just drop ring like a dainty him? butterfly. I was, yo, in. I was like, if, if Brock ain't careful, you're going to throw this ring on the crowd. Yeah, I was like, I was like hey, man, relax. <laughs> what really made this spot though, Again, I can't speak enough to like everything Roman does is like great. The way Roman fell <laughs> with the, the long exaggeration. It was like, zoop, 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 like the cartoon <laughs> fall. It was like, like the oh. Roadrunner getting to the cliff. <laughs> yeah, and, and he goes back. I was like, that it was a great visual. The match was fine. It was what it was. Right man went over. Yeah. Roman needed to go over. I'm tired of people getting buried though. Yeah. Now like, here's the thing you know what you could have done? What I thought was going to happen when the, the ring before- got. Yes. Well, well, for, that was my first thought yeah. was the was they would use the he, someone would use the tractor and put it yeah. down on someone. That makes sense. What I thought though when they lifted the ring is what if you throw the person under, under the, the ring, ring and, and then the ring move the tractor yeah. and the ring lands on them, but that maybe that was a safety issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure somebody was you like got, we should do that. You gotta and it lower was like, that very you slowly. Gotta lower it very so like, it, like yeah. again, like just how you scoop Roman up there and just put him right there in that ring. You know, I think you have to have some smile. type of licensing to, yeah. to maneuver that. that and it's crate. Brock too, like right, like yeah, Brock's like, not coming in there. You tell Brock do something gentle, and Brock is like. What? Well, Brock clearly would be under the ring. So now you're trusting Roman right. to then lower in on Brock. Yeah. Perhaps Roman did not get his tractor license yeah, in time nice. before this match. Class whatever because license. That the is only person that. who drove the tractor was uh, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah, correct. Yeah, throwing the flannel and the cowboy hat. And would you be yeah. surprised if Brock has an actual license? No. Oh, he's a maneuver. No, 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 he's had he it does. since he was four. Well, yeah, like he's on the farm maneuvering uh, heavy equipment every day. Since yeah. he was like four. He's <laughs> yeah. had a, like he drives this more than a car. Yeah. He yeah. knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think Roman has the same uh, set of skills no. that Brock Lesnar does. No. Paul Heyman taking an F5 to the announce table. Every so often he does this. He I should, thought they killed Paul. He should have. He should have done the CM Punk spot, which is you don't move like and like the crowds like all emptying the arena and like no one gets Paul Heyman. He's just, he's just and he's just still dead. He should just be still laying there, like even right now, just like still laying there. Yeah. They cut to to Raw on Monday and it's just he's still, still there. Like, Paul Heyman's still dead. Completely different city, yeah. but still like just laid out in the same. Look, spot. the doctors advised us not to touch Paul Heyman. They just said let him go. He's all right. He's just got to rest. What an incredible gimmick that would be if you just go city to city and the same guy is just <laughs> same spot the entire thing. It's like just like three weeks. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> the, the greatest F5 to a non-wrestler that I've ever seen, Michael Cole. The shoe came off and the shoe was in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> greatest F5. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the right person won. We, we get to the end of it. Roman must pose. Looks good. I feel like we could be done with feel the like Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. It's show. over. For now. At least, at, <laughs> at least, See, at least like, this Roman and Brock was entertaining. I will say that. Had yeah. shenanigans, had the right amount of ridiculousness to it. Like, clearly these were two that needed to be fighting in more fights with shenanigans because them having just a straightforward quote-unquote wrestling match where 
Spear F5. Spear suplex. Yeah. Spear suplex. Spam That's how you finishers. protect, That's how you protect the finisher in the fourth dimension. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was, again, as Zaza Pachulia said, Gaim Saba. <laughs> and, uh, and now we go into no more. what is clearly Roman versus Drew McIntyre Clash at the Castle. Should be which, fun. Which should be a really good match. I'll be interested to see, like, people think that Drew's going to go. No. 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 Um, only one man beats Roman Reigns. And we know who that is. And, it, and I'm glad you brought that up. If Cody ends up being the man that beats Roman Reigns, yeah. that's who Theory can cash in on. No, hands down. Like a hundred, that, that's and, and you do it, in. and it's like, oh, that makes sense. Yep. Cody doesn't look indestructible. Right now, the way Roman Reigns has been booked. Can't cash in. You can't beat him. No. You can't, like he is. Not even by crook, because he's a bigger heel than you. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. who, like he's like the worst video game boss, right? Like, who was the worst? Not nah, Goro, wasn't it? Shang Tsung was difficult in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, he yeah. was like the final one. No, um, was M Bison the final in, in Street, Street Fighter, Fighter? Yeah, the early like when Street Fighter Two first came out, I was like, you couldn't beat him. I was playing Street Fighter in the airport because uh, LAX launched like a gaming lounge. If anyone's in Terminal Three, by the way, it's incredible. Uh, but they have like all the old school consoles there. It's five dollars to play for an hour, and I was playing Street Fighter. That shit is hard. Like, douse him with my ass, and he's second. I didn't even get to Blanca. Like, <laughs> that shit was stupid hard, and I was playing uh, Punch Out, which nice. I got an ass whoop in there, too. Yeah, I, remember I remember that being a lot easier. It's Everyone has, like, the little patterns. quirks. Yeah. Yeah, and I got fucked up. I was like, I don't remember any of these patterns. Yeah, you got to remember that. So it's like Roman is, like, the, the super boss now. So yep. in order to beat him, like, you're building Cody. Cody beats him. Theory could beat Cody, and people go, all right, that makes sense. Theory, he just can't, like, the whole Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns visual is like, and he comes out, I was like, no. No, no. Not yet. Not yet. Is, is Cody hap just, like, sitting at home and just being, like, he's just so happy that he won't get yelled at for saying wrestler and, and calling it the belt? <laughs> no, you know what Cody's probably actually thinking? Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Are they <laughs> in this company? Like, because, like, Vince was like, well, you signed this contract, we'll push you to the moon, and then Triple H comes in and is like, you like Smashing Thrones, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Cody's happy he's at home right now. Because if he would have had to work for nine months, Trips would have booked him out of that angle. Probably. Maybe. But now when he comes back, it's going to be red hot at Royal Rumble. Yeah. You're kind of yeah. like, you have, you have you're stuck. Like, yeah, that's the guy. yeah, Cody yeah. Bro. you're stuck on him. Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Let's hit our break. We'll come back by finishing the pod talking about Raw and the last match for Ric Flair. Or is it? I hope so. Oh, last match? That'd be... <laughs> hey, hey, quick question. Which, who has the actual last match? Was was, it, was that was the best. Brock and that Roman? was my favorite thing of the whole night is when you <laughs> tweeted that poll out. Or is that it was Rick? the best. Shit, I don't know. Rick. <laughs> Which one do we see back in the ring first? Rick. Oh, Rick will be back <laughs> Yeah, first. Rick. If we're going uh, total, we probably get three more Rock and Ro or Reigns and Brock matches. We might get two more Flair. Oh, I don't know, man. We'll talk about it. Like, I'm not sure he wants to do a tag as his last match. Dude, got a lot of money. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that in detail. I, there yeah. were several times I was like, oh, get up, Rick. But then I was like, if he dies in the ring, it's kind oh, of poetic. If they AEW runs North Carolina a lot, mm. if his match could be on TV. All, all you gotta say is is Starcast happening next year? Probably. That's all you need to say. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. Rick's just gonna keep coming back. <sighs> like take her out. Conrad's just gonna be like, Rick, you good? Yeah. Rick's gonna be like, whoa. And he's going to be like, great, get in this ring. Taker laid the gloves in the ring, had like five more matches. Yeah. He was in Saudi every year. Like, never mind. Oh. The, the Undertaker me. played life coach for an hour and a half and then said, never say never. So like, Taker's coming back. So, oh my God. Yeah. Everything is pro wrestling. Everything is. This is a break. We're going to, again, wrap it up with Raw, Ric Flair, maybe some SmackDown predictions. I'm feeling frisky. See what we're going to get there. Don't go anywhere. Be right back after this. All right, everybody, just that quick, we are back. We're going to start with Raw coming out of the break, and then we'll get to Ric Flair at the end. This Raw was opened up by the women. I feel like Becky and Bianca opened up SummerSlam in a great way. Damn near stole the show, in my opinion, with all the people coming out. Only right, they open up the Raw after SummerSlam. Becky Lynch comes out in a sling. Yeah. Like, I did separate my shoulder. I'm going to be out. I'm not sure if she said she was having surgery or not. I don't think she said. But she'll be out for a couple of months. Then, of course, we have the EST follow her down with the promo. Becky, you know, real quick, hey, thank you. Becky goes to the back. EST cuts a good promo in the ring about 
the new crew, what is, I think they're being called Control. Yeah, they keep referencing Control. So it yes. Like that's so it sounds like that'll be the crew name, Control. And then we see on the screen, poor Becky somehow went to the back and ended up in the NXT parking lot. Oh. Cause she, <laughs> she I hate jumped. it when that happens. <laughs> Whoops. She, she got jumped to the back. And we see EO, Dakota, and Bailey put her arm in a chair, further injuring Becky. Yeah, you ain't coming back. Which led to another running spot where the EST tries to run after them. Yo, can I tell you how much I laughed because I was like, Bianca was running in heels, but she didn't, she didn't trip nothing. She, she didn't was, break stride. I was like, obviously, like she, obviously she knew what she was going to do heading into this segment. Yep. And she was like, I'm still going to wear these heels. That is a premier athlete. Right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She's on top of her game, sprinting. Oh my God. It reminded me immediately. It's one of the funniest scenes from the Boondocks where a Pibney slip back, takes off in the oh, car. Oh, yeah. And then the chick uh, <laughs> just runs out and she's just sprinting on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> and she can just still keep up with the car. That shit's great. The uncle was busting it. Yeah. So, I mean, she could probably wrestle an entire match with you. Next time I talk to her, I'm asking. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Key, key thing to mention there, though, is that Becky is now transitioning back to the, the man. man. The man. So no. it's even social media like, official. Even though I like the the her and Seth had the the crazy wacky yeah. wardrobe. Big I time Bex. Yeah, I like big time. She Bex. really she really did like it. It took a little bit, but by WrestleMania, I like with the second she came out for WrestleMania in that match, it's like I get it. Yep. it yeah. I I get it. Okay, all right, and like that, I think the haircut helped with that too, and and the whole fashionista yeah. stuff. She now it's so. time to grow the hair back. Yeah, I want to remedy yeah. something I said a while ago. So like mm. maybe maybe three years ago. I questioned her in ring. I was like, ah, sometimes your in ring just doesn't get it. It wasn't great three years. You're right. But now, it's like, I'm not saying she blossomed late, but it's like, it's all clicking. Yep. In a way that it wasn't necessarily clicking all, like everything's on point with her. The character helps. Yeah. When you, you mention this comparison a lot of like, she's like Stone Cold. Yep. And she started wrestling like Stone Cold after the neck injury. Yep. Because it fit the character of the man. So you can add a little bit more brawler in there. You're not like a straight baby face anymore. Even when she's baby, she can have that little like, we say this edge to her and like she can grapple more and really get those punches in, lay stuff in thick. And then when you go heel, of course, you could really lean into that. Yeah. But she doesn't have to lose any of that. Like there's no high flying spots. There's no, like a lot of the stuff where she's not as athletic as some of the other women, all this, but she can tell one hell of a story. And then she figured out how to lean that into the new character. So the character change helped that a ton. When 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 you get your nose broke like that, um, that that'll <laughs> that that means you have to brawl. Yeah. yeah you yeah. have to be a brawler by that point. So no, I like the opening segment, like mm-hmm. the way it went. Um it's raw. It's gonna open up with a a promo. And a raw after a paper. Yeah. Special. People will really complain, like, see, it's the same. They didn't open up with wrestling. No. It's, no. it's not dynamite. Get over it. I love it dynamite. It doesn't need to be 100% wrestling all yeah. the time. You got three goddamn hours. You got three there. hours. You just need good sports. Talk to me. Entertainment. Yeah. Entertainers. <laughs> so, next up, we get a match. Not a fucking good match. Miz. Oh. Wait. So, let's start wait, by wait, setting wait, the so stage. They, they fought on Raw? It was an actual match. There's match. Yeah. It and it match. wasn't the same people fighting the same people fighting oh, the same people wait. fighting the same people. Wait. Can we do this? What is this madness? How pissed is Vince at home right now? You're oh. ruining my show. He's just violently texting Kevin Dunn. Where's the 24 7 belt? Yeah, this is Gorilla yeah. 2. Where more, are the poop jokes? <laughs> more, <laughs> more camera cuts. More baby oil. <laughs> I need some of that maximum male models. That's some good shit. Why isn't Lashley playing it, playing on his cheeks? Oh, yeah. Bring that Where's back. Where's the baby oil? <laughs> so, Whew. no, we have wrestling. Uh huh. Starts off an incredible United States uh, championship promo. First five minutes, the first like 30 seconds was a little weird. Yeah. It, it was kind of like generic Photoshop. Shout out to everyone in group chat. I was like, eh. uh, but it, it rounded into place and they're making the mid card feel like something. all I've been asking for. And immediately the focus was improve the women's division, improve the mid cards. Yes. Easy. And it makes sense. Trips lived in the mid card for a great amount of time. He understands the importance of that. And XT did really good booking the North American title as well. I expected this. So, great promo package. Now we're having two triple threat matches. The winners face each other. See who faces Lashley next week. 
easy to make it make sense. You Very establish easy. a number one contender, part theory from that feud, let him chill for a second, and then you could build up new storylines and new feuds. Cool. So we have The Miz versus AJ Styles versus Mustafa Ali, who gets his first name back. Yeah. Bro. Not just Ali. The winds of change. Listen. He's, he's in Raw like 20 minutes in. Yeah. Listen. This match was a damn good match. It was. Oh, great match. But this is a good but. That finish, the 450 splash into the Styles Clash. Oh. That's pay per view sure. finish type shit right there. <laughs> but it reminds you, as I always say, I root for talent, not the promotion. They have the talent to do this yep. shit on the regular. Yep. You, sometimes you got to remember who AJ Styles is. And he, he reminded us who he was like, I'm going to remind y'all who the fuck I am. Yep. And he went out there and they put on a great match. Miz was perfectly fine. Mustafa Ali, thank God he got his first name back. Thank God he's working again. Styles going over, no problem with it. I think it was two commercial breaks in this match. Listen, we could talk about sports entertainment all we want. This was a pro wrestling show. You got to have sports to have sports entertainment. That's true. For a long time, they were just shitty entertainment. Yeah. They, they were like, we don't need sports. Lots of poop jokes. Yeah, like, no, you need sports to have sports entertainment. They brought the sports. This is a wrestling show. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll actually... Fast forward, just because I want to go through this whole thing. Sure. Ciampa versus Ziggler versus Gable in the second one. This makes a lot of sense because if one thing we didn't mention during the Miz match is that Ciampa was out there trying to help the Miz. Yeah. And who comes out to stop Ciampa? AJ Styles. Now, we go into this match. Ciampa versus Ziggler versus Gable. Not as good as the first one. Still good, though. Still good. I love the fresh matchups. I'm not sure if I've seen Ziggler and Gable wrestle before. No, you haven't. And then Ciampa's more than a capable wrestler. Do you know what's more important here? Three heels in yep. that triple threat match. And they didn't care. Nope. When's the last time that Gable uh, was solo? Oh, match. he hasn't been in a while. And everybody says he was Shorty G. Says he was Shorty right. G. And we don't mention it. We don't <laughs> talk about Shorty G. <laughs> but, but Brian Danielson, when I talked to him before, right before WrestleMania, he, he couldn't stop talking about Gable. He's like, he's... If there's anybody misusing this company, it was like two people. Gable? Well, three. Gulak, Gable, Cesaro, who has now left and has become back to Claudio. But Gable in this match reminded you, oh, he's really good. Oh, yep. yeah. He's really good. Super strong for his size. It's yeah, that, that rolling German suplex is a thing of beauty. Oh. And then, but Ciampa comes out successful, setting up the feud that was built in SummerSlam, Ciampa versus AJ Styles. Yeah. Hey, some booking. Smart way to get there. What, what, you mean you plan something? Right, with fresh Dang. matchups. Because before, it would have just been those two get in the ring, cut a promo, turns into a match. Yeah. Why? When you have three hours to fill and you found a good way to get to the same results and make them both look great mm -hmm. doing so. So that was great. They would go on to fight later in the night, which I guess I'm going to skip to that. Ciampa versus AJ Styles. After the triple threat. Still a lot of the Miz. Yeah. But I feel like that's coming to an end too. Probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if there was, there were, if SummerSlam, Dakota Kai and Eo Sky told you that was a Triple A show, Ciampa going over told you that Raw was a Triple <laughs> yep. A show. Yep. Yes. Ciampa right. over on AJ Styles. Yeah. I mean, look, man. With some small shenanigans. Yeah. But, like, for the most part, he won the match. He's a heel. He's a heel. And, yeah. <laughs> and the heel goes over on Styles in a, in a good match. And which, let's be honest, this would have never happened three weeks ago. No. The phenomenal forearm to the, the jumping knee. knee. Again, the wrestling. Landed clean. These guys were wrestling. They were not entertaining. Nope. They were wrestling. And that was entertaining. But they were entertaining. Exactly. Yeah. So... My only gripe about this whole series of events, oh, Ciampa face Lashley next week should be a great match. Maybe he can heal that up. I don't, Ciampa getting the belt right away is a little weird, but maybe that's where we see a split between Ciampa and Miz and, and get like a divide. Yeah, there. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he'll beat Lashley. No, no I, don't but think, like, I don't think he'll beat Lashley, but what, like, I think they'll find a way to more naturally move Ciampa away from Miz without having them feud with each other because Miz is still a great heel. Yes. Miz does not need to be babyface. And Ciampa is a tremendous heel if you let him be a heel. I think Trips will. Yeah. I think Bring back Ciampa's music. <laughs> Bring back the, the no music Ciampa. 
Oh, when he first murdered no music. Dark Down, but he you just gotta like to kill blues? somebody to that. That's, yeah, he's got to murder. Yeah, somebody. that psycho murder. <laughs> 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 but I at least need this. You know, someone's gonna die, chump. Yeah, like that. Like bring that that music back. Um, the crowd was shitty. This crowd sucked. Where the was crowd. the show at? It was. Oh my god! Some place they don't need to ever go back to again. No, <laughs> you just banning the crowd. The crowd stunk. You got a bunch of pro wrestlers, but this is this is where Vince was sitting at home. And go see. They would have cheered if I would have had a baby oil and a poop joke. Yeah. I mean, they popped for like some dumb shit. But they, I mean, yeah, this crowd was. They popped for promos, um, which was cool, and near falls. So they were just like a super casual crowd. Uh, yeah, I think it's a casual crowd. Again, like, uh, they didn't really know what they were getting themselves into either. No, they, got I, they, they, got some, they got some wrestling ass wrestling. Yeah, but it's, it speaks to how the WWE has cultivated an audience to expect certain things. Texas. Yeah. Okay. So it was in Houston. <clears throat> so okay. So it's like say Corpus Christi. If I'm if I'm used to going to WWE stuff, but I don't like Houston on Twitter all the time, or I don't do what like I, I'm coming to expect like not AEW. I'm coming to expect WWE shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I'm a casual fan and I come in and I'm like, what's all this wrestling what is shit? This shit? <laughs> like, what are they doing? No baby oil. All right. Got to train the crowd, man. You got to retrain them. You got to retrain them, and. It's, and it's good retraining. It's like, hey, man, shout out to them popping the biggest number in three years. Oh my goodness! And the biggest rating in the demo, which I hate demos, but since Raw after me. Yeah, and all I mean, it you knew it was coming, right? The transition to power. It's we're obvious. People were very excited to see what was going to happen. So, and we didn't get Brock or Roman. No. And I should tell you all you need to know that people want to see what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah the they, casuals will be there. It seems like. Of course. Because they were here for shitty stuff. More of the diehards wanted to see yeah. if this was like an experience. Well, die, Well, I think it depends on the... De- if we're talking like the WWE stands are... They're, they're always going to be there. Yeah. I think it's 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 not necessarily like the hardcore fans, but the fans of... WWE. Wrestling. Yeah, of yeah, wrestling yeah. like are now tuning in going, yeah. okay, now what the do you got? left after NXT went to shit. The people who are AW marks even were like... Oh, but I gotta look. <laughs> like they're look. they're they're you know people. The black and gold gets a good rep <clears throat> of of uh, of Triple H's time there. So there's reason to be optimistic. Yes, and I, I think. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the important things is uh, you're watching a show. It's like the season. This was like the season premiere. Yeah. Yeah. Of Monday Night Raw. Felt like it. Now they're gonna be people the next week. They go, oh, the ratings aren't the same, but the season premiere always pops a big rating. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna go down. Who cares? But they set a precedent that things are different. Yep. And as a pro wrestling fan, I enjoy different shit. Me, yeah. So let's go. Just give me different people fighting different people. Exactly. And this is going to be the interesting <laughs> thing is, uh, it go, you know, for the next few weeks where the expectations couldn't, couldn't be lower. Right. Like yep. the expectations of what people, you know, a lot of people have been asking for out of the WWE product basement are are so low that like people are going to pop on the internet anytime it's just uh, like we're we're literally talking here we're going there was wrestling on a wrestling show well you know but there hasn't been you know the number one thing was i was like makes sense it makes sense oh my god i'm watching things and it makes sense we get rid of the million camera cuts and we're in business something from kevin dunn for something from SummerSlam that was like a small part of it got told on the raw after SummerSlam. Incredible, right? Dare I say, is two days long-term booking? And then we have, again, (laughs) other ways to continue programs around each other. Mm -hmm. They're orbiting. We have Seth Rollins in the ring, cackling over what he did to um, Riddle. Riddle, thank you. What he did to Riddle, continuing that program. Riddle doesn't have to be there. And then the Street Profits coming out with Ford and Dawkins. And then Riddle saying, I'm not fighting the both of you. Rollins. Excuse me. What is it? Oh, Rollins saying, I'm not fighting the both of you. I am only fighting one. And then we get Montez Ford teasing his singles move against a guy like Rollins in a match, but really continuing the storyline of, are they breaking up? You're done with the Usos. You can't get over that hill. Can't be tag team champions again. So it's their program with the Usos still kind of simmering and the breakup. 
Seth's program, which isn't done against Riddle, or bringing each other and making for one hell of a program match and not avoiding that, cutting promos about both. Yeah, and incredible and book. There was a, even the way that Montez won Paper Rock Scissors, <laughs> where he didn't really win, he just stole the ref and ran down to the ring. Yeah. Now, obviously, Dawkins coming to protect his boy after Rollins wins, in which was a very good match. But now it's like, we got a couple stories going on here. And that's, and I, I'm, I don't know what to look for next week. Yeah. Or this grandstanding a little bit. Right. Now, if Dawkins comes out next week, because it seems like they cut a promo after, Dawkins is like, no, I want my shot now. Yep. If Dawkins beats Seth, does Montez become a little jealous? Right? Like, now there's stuff that makes sense. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's branching storylines. Yes. Like, things can happen based on decisions. So, yeah. <clears throat> we're in the right path. And it's uh, very interested to see how they, all this plays out. Another branching storyline, which I love. Alexa Bliss versus Asuka. And then... <laughs> it was funny because I was like, why are they wrestling? And then I was like, oh, okay. It makes sense. <laughs> then they get jumped by Bailey, Io, Dakota. And then Bianca comes out. And then people are like, oh, it's the classic. Now we get a triple threat, like nope. three versus three. Nope. Bianca says, I'm fighting one of you. Y'all pick. Bianca versus Io. Now this makes sense because now Bianca can kind of just ping pong between wrestling the other two and you can have other things. And then... Her and Bailey don't have to wrestle every week. No. And and this is one of the few times where a non-clean finish makes perfect sense. Yep. Oh, hands down. So we have Bianca versus Io. Great match. Um, Io still is insane with her flying moves and everything. She's but great. Bianca's a powerhouse. Two great styles working against each other. And then we end up with the DQ finish. Which I'm totally fine with. 100%. Because it fine. makes sense. Yep. It does. And then it's not a BS DQ finish. They just start throwing hands. Yeah. Like, yo, y'all stop cheating. And then they wouldn't stop cheating. We, we, I tell y'all one more time, they kept cheating. All right, we just going to all fight. We, we, we talked about how in Ronda and Liv and how no one looked good after that. Uh, everybody looked great after this. Everyone. Everybody, everyone was like, stock up. And this is where they did the tease of Io and Asuka. Oh. When they looked at it, I was just like, oh my God, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like in the next couple of weeks, it's going to happen. Oh, they're gonna that match. Oh, they're going to tear it up. The only person I'm wondering what, what really happens with is Alexa. Alexa is a, I mean, she could work Dakota Kai, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah. That's going to be a great match. But the question is the character of Alexa Bliss. The doll sells too much. I know. They, to they just, just keep bringing it out. Can't, can't get rid of it yet. But she's not that character No, anymore. it's like, I'll oh, just sell it. Like, all right, we got to sell this, but what are we going to yeah. do with it? She's little Miss Bliss again. Yeah. Mm. But... She's always a better heel, too. I don't like her. She's a great heel. She's but, great on the microphone. You know, we'll figure out how we get maybe, there. Maybe shift her to the blue brand? If there's she a could, she's one that can go. Yep. She's one that could go and immediately jump into a program with Liv Morgan. She would help Liv tremendously. Yep. Yeah. Perfect heel fo foil for her. And, yes. Um, and then, so that was smart. Then main event, Usos versus Mysterios. I mean, look, man. Again, I'm tired Mysterios of won. Yeah. Well, the, at SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah, with Judgment Day. Well. So it's just like, if we're making stuff make sense, mm. the team that won. Totally fine. Should get a title shot. Yeah, they should get their ass kicked, which is. At which what at? <laughs> like, goddamn. I'm so sick of these goddamn Mysterios. Dominic ain't good. No, Dominic he's not. not. He Logan tries, Paul though. already looks better than Dominic. He tries. No, Dominic does not look good. Oh, man. <laughs> but he's just, something's off. Maybe he needs to be a heel. Maybe he needed to be in the PC. I mean, we've passed that. Yeah, we did. His first feud is a Seth Rollins. Like, they did a lot. There's nowhere to go but down. No. Yeah, he's been tag champ. He's held the title. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. But this match, I mean, we all knew the Usos were going to win. Judgment Day runs in. <laughs> Rhea Ripley is like, look, let me get a piece of that. <laughs> piece of shit out of Dominic, too. It's like, goddamn. Dominic ate that spear from Edge. Yep. yep. From uh, Rhea pushing. Like, Rhea is a mess, and I love it. I Incredible. love it. Rhea's great, yep. but I don't know. Like, Usos, I'm curious. Like, where do the Usos go from here in terms of, like, a tag team? Who do they work after this? Street Profits were, like, the top of the brand. New Day is basically dead in the water. Well, you heat New Day up in yeah, but it's hard. three seconds. But it's also, like, there's still a stipulation there where they can't challenge for the title. Yes. If, we are, if yeah. we are, and now granted, that was under a different regime of creative, but... This, 
just trying to keep score here. You know, long term booking. It's like who else are what other tag teams are there? For the Usos the world. What other baby face well, tag the, teams? No, no baby face. They're heating up Viking Warriors. Yeah, they're heels. I um, wonder if uh, you know, if Trips really wants to go uh next level here and maybe Maybe take two single stars and make a tag team out of yeah. them. Yeah, Alpha them. Academy is not doing anything. Because like the, nothing. Because like the package tag teams that we have, I mean they they run through the gambit. So you're gonna have to have maybe you know maybe, what makes maybe sense? Rollins teams with someone. I don't know. You know what makes sense from the get go and what should have been done, and you can easily rework this. How about you bring the hurt business back? Well, yeah, I mean. Lashley's a, a great baby face now. We've get seen it, them get, as a baby face group one bro, night. Get MVP away from almost. Oh my God. That, that's it. It's You're wasting right. MVP. Yeah. Bring them back together. I don't care if you put almost with Lashley. No, no, no. I don't want to see almost anyway. No. I mean, it's all right. He can just you, be the muscle. Shelton and Cedric. The muscle's you can, muscle. You can heat Shel- Shelton and Cedric up. Right back up. Or <laughs> as a baby face or, tag. Want some real fun with this? Let's do the hurt business again. Let's get Apollo Crews out of NXT and put him in the herd. Mm-hmm. I'm all right with that. I'm down with a faction with like five or six. Listen, put all the black people. I don't say that often. But <laughs> here, like, put them all together. Like, saying, Ricochet ain't almost doing could shit. do something. Uh, oh, all this Ricochet. Sh- just all the black people. Hey, you know, <laughs> why, why don't we get, uh, why don't we get uh, Carmelo Hayes up on some main roster oh, action? Oh, not yet. He has to be champion now. Yeah, let's, like. Let's, like He's, Carmelo Bree. If you get if you get him out of NXT 2.0, it's like there's nothing. Starts, you're, not you're, not, you're, yeah, not you're not wrong. You're not. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I just want to see good things for Carmelo. Yeah, yes. well, he's great. He's tremendous. no, he's money. He's tremendous. But the Usos, yeah, they've run into this thing where it's like the, this. This it's gonna take a while. This feud with the Street Profits ended not the way that a lot of us wanted to see, and it's like, well, Usos is still one of the best tag teams in the world, but now they have nobody to work. They need. They need like. They need the. Hangman Omega tag team to face them. That's yeah. what I feel like they need. They need a tag team of like two people who just decide, okay. They enough, really enough. did. Like, how yeah. fast do you. Rollins. How fast. Okay. Like, I, I got one half, but I don't know who's the other half. Raw on Monday. Do you know what city it's in? No. It's in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Uh huh. Now, one guy is a heel. But uh-huh. Miz, Miz plays a pretty good heel, right? Yeah. What if Miz costs Ciampa against Lashley? We don't have heel Ciampa. What if Miz is the heel there, right? It cost him. Turning Ciampa babyface. I don't want Ciampa babyface. What if he's a babyface? Oh, God, don't do this. I yeah, he's, 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 he's pulling this card. What yeah, if he's, he's pulling a babyface yes. and he's Here in the go. back? Uh-huh. They're like, what's next for you? You just lost a title opportunity. He says, you know what? You can't I'm keep me away from having gold. I'm gonna I'll, do it myself. I'll get a title. And then they're like, well, you just lost this opportunity. What title are you going to go for? Do it myself. No. What title are you going to go for? In walks Johnny Gargano. Oh, Didn't I just say do it myself? DIY? Yeah. Listen. I, I'm, again, while I, I'm thrilled with the concept of that, I, like I said last week, I, I'm sure Gargano, I'm sure they're probably talking. And I, I just know that Gargano's probably sitting there going, all right. Because the, the, what makes this complicated from a business perspective is Gargano obviously can't come in on an NXT contract. No, no. They got to give him new money. Different people in charge. They, yeah. They don't got to give him max money. I don't know. I mean, max money is ridiculous. Also, just kind of move away from that for a, for a second. If, if you mentioned Rollins, you want to know who could team with Rollins? Kevin Owens. Oh. Oh, Owens. What? Okay. okay. Can we finally yeah. see Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn? Sammy Zayn? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, they're not doing anything else yet. Also they're true. Not. What if the Uso just showed up? Sammy was just in a bloodline thing. They don't I seem mean, to be around Sammy. And Sammy would be like, you know what? Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm Y'all that, celebrated. That actually works. I wasn't even invited to the celebration at SummerSlam. Dude. I'm coming for y'all. If, if they went that route, the crowd, well... So one, there's, there's a couple things happening. They've already teased enough out of Owens and Sami Zayn having history. Yeah. But for us, who have watched them since ROH, and now you have, like, you can have a legitimate blood feud because you built it in with Sami Zayn trying to get in the bloodline. It yep. was like, man, because whatever arm injury he's dealing with, hopefully that subsides. They've kind of, they're repackaging Owens. They've been kind of playing yep. with this. 
You bring these two together, whether they're heels, baby faces, who cares? And they work the Usos. They can work the Usos for months. Yep. And they oh, can end in a hell of a cell. They can end in a ladder match, a hell in the cell match, whatever it Gotta is. Be a ladder match. And you know what you can always do? <laughs> Break them up. Turn Owens on Zane, <laughs> and then we're, then you finally get that WrestleMania match that yep. we've been waiting for with, with baby with, face Zane and Kevin Owens. And then you put Sam Zane back so in the mask. Is, is, yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Zane just like go, like Finn Balor demon mode. Like he just goes, I I I forgot something, and just, just throws on a mask. El Generico. Everyone will pop. Oh my god, you can't show any of that footage now, right? The Ring of Honor footage, no. As, uh, well, I mean, Tony yeah, Tony. you you could, you just would. Oh, Tony Khan money. Tony's gonna say no. Yeah, it's I'd all, say no too. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. PWG might sell you some stuff. Yeah, like you, there's, 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 some yeah, there's, there's ways. ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can just get El Generico that. is not owned by Ring of Honor. Yeah. No. So, uh, no, I, I like that idea. That's pretty much how Raw went. Can't wait to see what happens on SmackDown. Touched on some of the possibilities there. Just so we get out of here. Ric Flair had his final match. Did he? That he did. Did he? He had color. Did it ain't he a, did. It no, ain't no, a Ric no, Flair no, no, match no, no, no. unless I mean, I mean, I think, I think we need to qualify this as Ric Flair had a match. Okay. May have been his last. May have been his last. And it I've, may not be his choice. I've seen like <laughs> I've seen like three last Ric Flair matches. So you're fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, right. was, Here, here's what I want to say. All right. The match was, it was hard to watch. It was just like. I only saw clips. I refused to watch the entire thing. I, I didn't was, want to see a man die. I watched the whole show. The whole show was fine. But this match, I was like. The oh. card was actually really good. Well, the, the, the four-way, the Lucha four-way. Yeah. With Ray Phoenix and oh and Bandito and Black Taurus and who was it? Oh my god, I can't remember. But that was tremendous. Yeah. The other four way with Gresham was like super short. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the show was Gresham won. Yeah, it was the show was fine, right? This match, so I watched the roast the night before, and it, it made me feel gross because I realized, like, one, Teddy Long hates Ric Flair. <laughs> he says he's a racist and will never say anything otherwise. He'll call him every name under the sun. But as I'm watching the roast, and there's like no black people on stage. And they're talking about Ric Flair being a Republican. And like one of the roast jokes was, how's Ric Flair going to be a Republican if he won't keep the Mexicans out of Charlotte? And I was like, God damn. But then in my head, I was like, man, I love pro wrestling and pro wrestling doesn't love me back. Because <laughs> I grew up watching Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. They both hate me, probably. <laughs> like, they both like hate God, what dang. I stand for, right? Like and then the Undertaker too. Like God oh. damn. So I'm watching this, and then the match is happening, and I'm watching, it and I'm like, this is like, yeah, like, well, going back to the roast, they talk about like the plane ride from hell, and Ric Flair like twirling his penis like a helicopter, and I was like, <laughs> this is so bad. Like, and we're cheering this man on in his final match where he might die. And I'm like, wow. What I'm telling you this much: they gave him a hell of a pacemaker. Well, it, it, it I mean, struggling. they did do a spot where he kayfabe almost died. Uh, yeah. And went with a low blow. It was. He faked a heart attack. It, it was this. This match was just. It was a lot. It was a lot. And, you know, people like Ric Flair, you're my hero. And it, just the whole weekend, I was like, yeah, but I, he's not a great person. It's not. Let's put it this way. In the year of our Lord, 2022. The timing's not great. No. It's not great. <laughs> timing's not great. No, I mean, between not, this not and this then, week. Like, then it makes you think about Vince. Like, Vince. I was doing that. I was, like, thinking about Vince McMahon. And I was yeah. like, wrestling loves me. but it, I mean, I love wrestling, but it don't love me back. Like, it no. doesn't love women. It doesn't love women It doesn't at love all. minorities. It's like, it doesn't love liberals. It just, it, it's a very conservative, toe the blue line, vote the, for Trump party. The entire time, Bret Hart's face was just like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> Yo, Bret Hart was right about everything. I'm going to say. Hart like, was there with his black wife. Yeah. His best life. Bret, Bret talking <laughs> about how, like, America's not that great. Canada has free health care. Like, when he was, even when he was a heel, I was like, he's on to something. Yeah, he's on to something. <laughs> but as I watched this, this show and Rick was working and Jeff Jarrett, and I was like, damn, they all voted for Trump, didn't they? Like, all of them? Taker never took a seat. Yeah, well, at least. Uh, Taker was like, that's my boy. I was like, oh, man. Hey, hey, at least Jarrett took out a guitar. So that's good. Yes, he was well used. All, yeah. all I'll say is just, you know, for whatever, you know, whatever for whatever this match is, just just God bless Jay Lethal. Oh, you just know what? Bless. One of the worst parts. I love that guy. Why isn't Dry Day in trunks? I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I've never seen the man's thighs. Always wrestles in long yeah, pants. That's fair. I was like, trunks? 
Mm. Not yeah. for me. It's like Ric Flair was like, no, we're rocking out with our cock out. <laughs> And then, like, don't, don't you put and pants I, on. I, it's my shit. final match. And then you, like, Andrade was like, mm, you've done enough of that in your <laughs> yeah. career. I don't, I don't want, know if I want to be around. Listen, when your Man. stepdad says whatever. What a, uh, what a, what an event. That's all I will Could say. Could big gold. No, Could he was struggling. They put that big gold on him. It was like, oh, his pacemaker was like, uh, I got to get through this. I, I. That's how Arnold Schwarzenegger sounds in movies. I, I, then, I. Then, That's then, how he sounded. Then he parted with Kid one, Rock after. One last yeah, ride on exactly. Space Mountain. There was Kid Rock. There was Kid, like, dude, everything about this show was like, God, this show hates me. Like, they were telling, at the roast, they were telling jokes about Hogan. And, and here we had Kid Rock was at SummerSlam. And he was at the last match with Ric Flair, and they celebrated Kid Rock. And I was like, fuck that guy. I was like, what a show. Wow. <laughs> so, what a show. We had I, some, mean, I mean, until I, the next last until, match. Until the Ric last Flair. match, again. <laughs> Part two. Ric, Ric Flair to Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be when it's like Rick, a pacemaker Rick, Rick, shot. Rick Flair, times. the flaring. I don't. I don't know. We're gonna have to come up with Conrad. You call me. <laughs> I'll come up with some names for you. They'll book him again too. One hundred percent, they will. Well, hold on. It's not that they'll book him again. It's that Rick will go. So who am I fighting? Yeah, and they'll be like, "Damn it, Rick, you gotta stop no. this." Rick, we called that the last one. Now the last one. And, and the fact so far. Yeah, and the fact remains is like you know, this is the way Rick wants to go out, right? Like somebody gotta save him for himself. Do they? They do. No, no, no. Here's what I'm. Here's why I say this. Do you think Ric Flair wants to die anywhere else but a wrestling ring? No, but he'll no. keep trying it until he does. But, but, but here's my thing. Like, well, you can't really stop him, right? Like, somebody's gonna book him. Somebody's gonna book Ric Flair to work. If he continues to want to wrestle, the only, the only, there's only two places that man wants to die: in a ring, or in some vagina. That's it. Both may very well happen. In the near future. Right. If he keeps pushing himself. Rick Flair to electric boogaloo. No, we can't do it. Like, I'm so glad we got this match because the rumors I heard was they were going to try to get Steamboat <laughs> to come back. Oh, no. Steamboat said no. That, that's yeah. actually. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, mm, no way. Oh, I'm, my God. They try to get Steamboat. Yeah. They try to kill everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. no. Like, <laughs> and Ricky's still in good, good shape. That's fair. But, but wrestling shape? He got common sense. Well, yeah, he was like, mm, no. He's also probably like, I want blood on my hands. I don't want Rick. Ric Flair to die in there. But, but ultimately, like, Ric Flair, if, this is all he's got. If Taker wasn't locked into a lifetime WWE deal, it'd be Flair Taker. Dude, like, next you want, year. You want to take it a step further? If Vince don't come back, Vince will be the special guest referee. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. They're all standing in the middle of the ring, all have color. And we'll, yeah, and we'll do it at a MAGA rally. Oh, <laughs> Take, Taker got his extensions. <laughs> I mean, Wait, when's the election year? Where's the election year? They'll they'll do it. It's coming up, and yeah, yeah they'll it, fundraise. It'll be at the RNC, yeah. oh. and they'll do it in the ring. They'll, they'll, oh. have, the, they'll have the cops oh. around the ring, and they'll have all like the thin blue line. And I'm taking this really far. Oh, it's I? American badass. Yeah, you're not getting regular. Kid Rock will perform for to Ca get yes. under Careful, Dre. You're, you're putting things. You're manifesting things. I am. Into the universe and, right now. And Vince is like, yeah, if I can't come to dump back to my, my company, I'm going to... Let me tell you about some good shit here. He's retired. He's a free agent now. That's what I'm saying. Vince going to start taking bookings. Oh. oh, my God. Well... Vince in GCW next. No, no, no. <laughs> Vince versus Cardona in GCW. I mean... This if, time next year. If Brett booked him, he'd book him to kill him. <laughs> oh, Death match? Man. Yeah. Oh my God! Come on, old man, blow off those knees and quads one more time. Yeah, just, nah, just put, put him in. Put him, I'm put, watching that match. Put him in a tag match with Bussy. <laughs> oh my! That—that's what kills Vince. <laughs> <laughs> put right. Bussy over on Vince McMahon. Time to go. <laughs> yeah, we've gone down the rabbit hole. We appreciate everyone. Shout out to Blue Eye Studios. Thank you for having us as always in the studio here in the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas. Make sure you guys check us out if you're in town for an ABJ. Say what's up. We record on Thursday. I'd, I'd like to make just one quick shout out here yes. before. A friend of the show, oh, yes. Denise Salcedo, got married over last she weekend. Did. I was there at the wedding. It was a wonderful ceremony, beautiful ceremony. Um, congratulations to her. Uh, she's amazing. Go follow her stuff. Go do all that. Looked um, amazing. She is now on a honeymoon. On Love the honeymoon. Um, and I now have all of Taylor Swift's discography stuck in my head. Nice. Uh, because nice. that well, there was a lot of that play at the <laughs> wedding. So congratulations. She watched Raw on her honeymoon. 
Yeah. Most committed person. You know, I, 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 she, it, we, we were all there watching SummerSlam together day before her wedding. She's doing the post show right after that. I thought she was going to freaking work on her wedding day. <laughs> yeah. My wife so, would never. No, you're I, I tell that's you what. You draw the line. She, she's one of a kind. So congratulations, my friend. That's wonderful. So Yes, that was amazing. How'd you rock the hair for the wedding? Uh, I did ponytail. The, just ponytail, so the hair was was kind of was kind of hanging out. So it was it was quite Adam Cole ish. Okay, that's classy. So I like that. You know, um, it was it looked good in the suit. So <laughs> make sure you guys check out our interview with Denise Indeed. on YouTube, <laughs> on our Corner Podcast YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you all, everyone in the booth. Ross, Nasty Nestor, holding it down in there for myself, Old Man Andres Hell, Producer Cole, Bay Bay. We'll see everyone on. We'll see everyone again later on in the week. Appreciate you all. Till next time, we're out. Peace.